Hello everybody and welcome to the Harry Edwards Healing Minute wherever you are, whatever time of the day. Thank you for joining us. Just playing some music by Bliss. A hundred thousand angels. Just turn the music down a little. My name is Bev. Make yourself comfortable and relax. Focus on your breath. In with the new and out with the old. Clear your mind of any worries. Allow your body to release and let go. Feel calm and know that you are safe and at ease. Now visualise yourself inside the sanctuary chapel, in the rose garden with the water fountain, cherry tree walk or perhaps in the surrounding woodland of Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary or looking out onto the Surrey Hills or wherever your favourite place is. Let's begin with attunement and grounding. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies and wherever you are right now. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. Now for the Sanctuary Prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power and disharmonies within me may be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose for those who are sick, or in the darkness of despair who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit. I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they might too experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. The Great Invocation From the point of light within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God, love has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. 
from the centre which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out and is cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan of earth. Now touched by angels. We are touched by angels and walk where angels tread. They will guide us, talk beside us through the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and gentle healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand, and forever touched by angels, we walk hand in hand. We now ask that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder, and perhaps in your own thoughts and written words, receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. Also send healing for the animals of this world and especially to our animal friends who are part of our family and now are in spirit. Now for a minute of silence whilst these healing energies are sent to the world. Thank you. May all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Our thanks and blessings for your help today in sending out the wonderful healing energies and to all our friends in spirit, thank you. I can't remember how I received this book, perhaps a friend gifted it to me, but I hadn't read it until recently. And I followed my gut feeling, my intuition, my angel, and opened at a random page in the book and read this that I'm now going to share with you. The book is titled The Big Book of Angels. And it's about angels and children. A special angelic connection where a seven-year-old teaches her dad about divine guidance and it's been written by Toby Hart and he's written it was a typical school night my daughter Hallie seven years old was settling in after a bedtime story as I was saying good night she noticed the cover of a book in my hand that had a picture of a child on it she asked why I was reading a children's book and I said that it was not a children's book but a book about children and all the ways they all the ways that they see and think about the world. Oh, you mean like seeing angels, she said. 
As a psychologist and university professor, I was certain that this was not what this developmental psychology book was about, but said, well, yes, I guess it could be about things like that. I see my angel, she said matter-of-factly. In that moment, I suppose that for a child who always wanted to stay up later, this had the desired effect. I slowed my exit. Do you see her now? he asked. Just a minute, she replied. As she lay on her bed surrounded by her toys, I watched her move her spine from side to side, apparently trying to get in the right spot. Her eyes were now closed and she started to take in deeper breaths in a rhythmic beat. My wife and I had never spoken of angels, meditation or the like in front of her, nor had she seen anyone do yoga or meditate that we knew of. While I was not sure what she was doing, it was clear that she knew. After four or five minutes, she calmly said, OK, I can see her now. I asked her several questions, including how she and her angel communicated. She said, it's kind of like thoughts and pictures all together. I asked if I could speak with her angel and she paused and then said, my angel wants to know why you want to talk with her. I said I was curious and wanted to learn about her angel. She again paused and said, OK. She told me that her angel knew my angel and that they seemed to be old friends. We covered quite a lot of ground in the next 15 minutes. At first, I asked some fairly trivial questions and these were politely but clearly dismissed or reframed and turned into questions of more substance. So I sharpened my approach. I began to ask questions about life, about what the angel was there for, about it by she and Hallie, and mostly as a test about any insight and advice she had for me. I asked questions to her angel and Hallie seemed to serve as the go-between. She would pause for a moment after I asked something and then offer a reply. That was most significant, was not so much the scene Children have rich imaginations, but the quality of the answers that she provided. This little perky seven-year-old spoke with profound depth of wisdom that seemed simply extraordinary. Her answers and comments were elegantly simple and deeply insightful, offering the kind of crystal clarity and remarkable depth that I had not heard from her before and rarely heard from the wisest adults now. Hallie started to wiggle and it appeared that our conversation was nearing its end. I asked her one more question. What does your angel do for you? She said that her angel lets her know that she is loved and she described being provided guidance and comfort, a kind of centering in love and clarity. She gave me the impression that her angel does not solve problems so much as provide a bigger view of the issues, a vantage point that seemed to help Hallie centre herself to calm, worry and doubt. The angel does not give her love exactly, but reminds her that she is loved. Our conversation seemed to be finished as my daughter shifted back into her sleepy seven-year-old, so we said goodnight and I left her room dazed. Does Hallie actually receive guidance from an angel? I cannot verify the source of her insight in conventional empirical means. No one can, but I can listen deeply to the quality of the information she offers and watch the impact it has on her life. What I see is that she manages to tap a vein of insight, wisdom and love intentionally and without any previous training. I have come to think of her angel as an aspect of her higher self or higher intuition. I don't think it matters whether this thought is of a guardian angel, a guide, a heart or whatever. What is important that she can find it on her own 
and that serves as a wellspring for love and wisdom. And as children are often powerful teachers, I have found that watching my daughter listen to her angel has reminded me to listen to my own. As a young child myself, I remember asking my mother when I was going to bed to leave the bedroom window, sorry, the bedroom door open because I didn't want her to shut out my feathered friend. Thank you for listening today. Please continue to contact us in the normal way. We are still just a phone call away. You can contact us on the um, internet. We can talk to you on Zoom, telephone, Skype. Join us tomorrow for another Healing Minute and also on Zoom um, at 10.15 tomorrow morning. Bye for now. Take care. Love, light and blessings to you all. I'm going to finish with some more music from Bliss, which is Come Into The Light. should I do when a gentle hand reaches out to take my own? How should I feel when tears of joy, they just won't stay inside these eyes? And what will I do when I start to love you and really trust and know Bye everybody, take care.